After nearly 20 years in operation, the KSCS drama project has come to a sudden halt. This after last week's announcement from Ganawage Sagote Genha's Community Services that it was suspending the project for 120 days, citing that it needed to reevaluate how it fit in with the community health plan. Since then, Mohawk TV has been investigating this story, and today we sit down with Director of Family Services at KSCS, Loanne Stacy, to get to the bottom of this story. And uh, you're watching Mohawk TV. Right now we're sitting here at Community Services with uh, Luanne Stacy. She is the Director of Family Services. Family Services. Um, it's a new position for you. Yes, it is. A new, it's a new position. I've been here for seven months. Uh, I had been here previously for almost 20 years as a manager right. of uh, the Sadesanio program, the drug and alcohol program and prevention services. Right. So you've been around the block. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Um, okay. So I, I understand that, you know, obviously out in, in Gahnawage, there's been a lot of talk about the uh, drama club and community services and some of the issues that are going on there. Um, but before we get into it, um, I just wanted to know if you wouldn't mind differentiating what is um, community services role in this because, and then maybe you could clarify the drama club, Turtle Island Theater, and the fundraising committee. I'm not um, sure. I, I, I guess one of the things, um, t uh, the reason for the pause of the KSES drama project was because we were having difficulties too defining what the lines are between the three entities and that is one of three processes for the evaluation. Okay. Uh, in terms of the um, drama project, what the pro drama project is, is 20 some odd years ago we were approached by Gaga Yusta who was having after school drama program at the school but could no longer support it. So they asked KSES, can we uptake um, the project within our organization. Um, I was the manager of the drug and alcohol program at the time and I thought it was a great idea, let's bring this in. It's a new way of getting um, life skills and health to kids in the community. Uh, we recognize that sports, you know, doesn't always fit for all kids. There's the performing arts and different things. So we mm -hmm. said, you know what, this is a great idea. And uh, from there, um, we took it on a, as, a, as a program underneath the drug and alcohol program. Uh, what had happened is the Brighter Futures came within the community and we had set up a proposal system. So we had applied for funding under Brighter Futures and started receiving funding the first year of the Brighter Futures program to the KSES drama project. Okay. And why it stays a project is Brighter Futures is, fun, is uh, project based. They won't right. fund programming. So it's been a project for 20 years, even though its identity is a program. Okay. In the midst of all of this, Kevin um, Saylor had already had his Turtle Island Theater Company was established through, I believe, the K-Stars. Okay. And what happened is that was a separate entity, but we figured we would work together and, and from there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure about explaining where the fundraising committee came in because I was not involved in that part of it. Um, from what I know from the media, basically they were there to fundraise for the new theater mm -hmm. that was being proposed. Uh, over the time, what, I'm, what we're getting at is that there are three entities that need to define what role people play in that. You know, mm -hmm. the drama uh, program, which is tied to the Brighter Futures dollars, is very clear, but the other roles, it's not. And that is one of the aspects of why we wanted to find out what do the three entities' roles, what are the three entities' roles in this? And how, you it, can, coexist. And how can we coexist and from here help each other to keep uh, performing arts alive and kicking? You know, uh, what's our role? What's the, the fundraising committee's role? What is the theater company's role? I'm not sure at this point. And that, those were some of the questions that we were proposing and things that we needed answers. And that went back to Derek's initial email and meeting okay. with them. So this okay. is what we're trying to clarify. You know, and they also have the musical entertainers and okay so see if you were just an average community member who's looking at all of this even as a media person um, I you know believed that the drama project was all of community services no, was it's funded by community services no, it's I mean I knew that they were doing 
productions and that they were also fundraising, yeah. but I just thought it was all a part of the same initiative. No, it's not. There were clear defined areas because when uh, the drama project started, it, it began with a children's program. It started after school and then became a children's program and evolved. And I mean, like any good programming, you're expecting it to evolve. Where the confusion between the three entities and whose roles in that, I, I can't explain that. And that's what we're hoping that we can get clarified. So any future plans that we have, we know whose role is what and how we can play that. And that's what we're hoping to work with the committee to, to, to establish that. Okay. Luann, can you tell me what is the current situation right now with the Gunawage Drama Club and Community Services going on? Okay, um, basically last Friday we had a meeting, uh, Derek uh, Montour, Terry Young and myself, with uh, partial members of the uh, Turtle Island Fundraising uh, Committee. committee yeah. And uh, what we had done is they had some questions regarding the temporary suspension of the KSES drama uh, project, which we answered some questions. We've had some questions regarding the relationship between the KSES Drama Project and the uh, fundraising committee as well as the Turtle Island Company because there's a lot of um, cloudiness around whose role, whose responsibility, um, and we're trying to get it resolved so it's very clear whose mandate is what. Mm -hmm. As we left the meeting last week, uh, we offered some options of things we could look at. We had three or four options that were proposed and they advised us that they were in not in a position to respond, that they needed to take it back to the entire um, committee mm -hmm. and that we have a meeting set up for tomorrow morning to um, discuss um, what they're looking to propose. Okay, so now how did community services arrive at d the decision to say, okay, we're at a point now where we need to evaluate this program? I, 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 guess, I guess just to clarify, uh, the evaluation um, actually was mandated by Derek for all of the programs within KSES. So anything that falls under our programs, we're looking at processes, procedures, looking for improvements, looking mm -hmm. for things. And part of it is is because we're trying to identify what are the resources that we currently have, what are things that we need, because we're at the beginning stages of a strategic planning. So uh, we're currently having a committee that's working on that. So we're trying to spread out the message to the staff that we're going to begin to look at things, you know. Mm -hmm. Are things working? Are they not working? And pretty right. much that was the bottom line. When it came to um, the KSCS drama program, when Derek became the executive director uh, last April 2012, uh, one of his first things was to learn all of the programs and initiatives. And there had been on the table by the previous executive director um, some concerns were regarding the lines of responsibility between the three entities. Um, um, the artistic director had also um, made a request that he needed additional resources and whatever. So Derek met with the committee back then, had raised some of these issues, and uh, they said that they would get back to him. Mm -hmm. As of November 2012, there was still not a reply to the questions. They hadn't had a follow-up meeting. There hadn't mm -hmm. been anything. In that time, uh, Terry Young had uh, come on as the new manager of prevention and was given the mandate to follow up to ensure that we don't lose drama in the process to ensure that we can get some answers to those questions. Mm -hmm. Time goes on. I get hired as the director of family services uh, in February, uh, January and uh, basically again still no answers mm -hmm. so we had been looking at what do we do because and and we completely understand that in terms of drama and planning they have three major production seasons so you finish one you're going into the next you, right. you're, and, and we understand that but we don't we're not afforded the time to sit down to talk and to do that and we can't wait months and months and months because when I went back and checked the documentation through the 20 years, this kind of process had been tried with different other supervisors and different people to no avail, and those questions are still not clear. 
So we thought of what could be some other options instead of redoing the same thing again. So mm -hmm. we talked about possibly suspending the summer program. And then we thought about it. You know what? There's a lot of people who use the program, the summer, the kids. And right. our mandate is the children's programming. Mm -hmm. So it didn't make sense. The other thing that happened uh, at about the same time was that the artistic director went on a leave. Mm -hmm. So we said it's, it doesn't make sense for us to do um, the evaluation not having them involved. Mm -hmm. Summer programming went on and basically what we did is then we thought about it well then we'll do it for the fall because we figured if we took the time to do it now it would help us in future planning it would you know there were a whole bunch of things to it mm -hmm. this wasn't just well we're gonna close it just because we feel like it. that wasn't we, we put a lot of thought and time to what are the things we need it we also need it to work with the volunteer committee because they're the volunteers they're 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 the ones who know the drama part mm -hmm. we know the logistics we know know the financing we know that piece but we need to work together mm -hmm. and with um, the artistic director due back late September it didn't make sense for us to go and hire somebody part-time bring them in and then he returned so it, it, it was just really around timing mm -hmm. I mean, and one of the things too that is the reaction to the I guess the decision from community yes. services is said to be a little bit uh, tumultuous. Obviously, people feel, um, or it's coming off as it's, it's shocking. Uh, why? Was there any warnings given or discussions um, Basically, it was difficult committee? because um, our artistic director was on leave, so mm -hmm. upon his return. And we didn't want to wait, so we had met with him last Wednesday to advise him of what we would be planning to do, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and it's very difficult because in his job we're recognizing it's not a one-man job right you know and we want to try and help but we can't help something if we're not you know mm -hmm. if we're not known of, of what exactly the needs were well I know that um, you're talking about Kevin Saylor yeah. of course and he was on a leave of absence yes. due to health yes. reasons. yes yes um, was any of that considered given the fact that he had been out for a length of time and that more than likely couldn't uh, communicate with community Well, that's services. why we chose not to. That's why okay. we delayed it because, mm -hmm. you know, we have to respect an employee being on a leave, you right. know, it, it, and like I said, we had been told it would be more towards the end of this month, so we needed to give time, but, you know, pressure was being on because the artistic director was telling us we need to get production, we need to get started back in the loop, and we, you know, and we were saying, we can't. We ha we want to wait because we thought mm -hmm. he would return back to work, and then we would sit down and share with him what are the things we needed to do. Mm -hmm. I know he has the commitment and 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 the desire and and the whole part of drama, but there's a whole logistical piece that needs to be done. Right. You know. Um, what was the whole reasoning behind? Uh, changing the locks on um, basic, the theater. Okay, basically what happened is when we met with the artistic director, um, we had asked to return the keys because one of the pieces of the evaluation was to do an inventory of items that belong to the drama program as well as anything that would be in there from everyone else. Mm -hmm. In the 20 years, there's not been any type of inventory done on these assets, and they're community assets. So as the insurer of, um, as KSES is the insurer, if something were to happen to that building, we have no clue about how much items are in there. It's not responsible to not have that. The other piece to it is it's been alluded that it could be about a million dollars worth of assets if you start looking mm -hmm. set design costume and whatever mm -hmm. so our whole idea is gather up the keys back and when our artistic director goes then we'll we'll probably put a team together and go in and scan and start as much as we can so then after that but we were advised that there were numerous keys out mm -hmm. we didn't want people going in we don't want people because we had a plan of part of the evaluation was going to be to look at what the inventory was. Right, which is understandable. Yeah, yeah. So we went and we changed the locks and our plan was to give the church committee uh, a key who does have a key for the place and then our artistic director who we would have given a key upon his return to work. Mm -hmm. Has your artistic director since resigned? Is this uh, true? As far as we know, that's we received a letter and uh, 
from all the media like mm -hmm. yourself that's what we've read so okay now um, what is community services reaction or I guess to the statements that are being made from the Turtle Island Theater Committee or company that uh, that most of the belongings in that theater were not purchased by the monies that were given to the theater that they were donated or they were privately purchased or things like that like what how well, do you what, figure well, that out well well the whole thing is we can't and this is part of the problem because mm -hmm. of 20 years and 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 picking up um different things over the 20 years it, it, is it to, i look at them they're community assets regardless of who they were given to purchased by or whomever mm -hmm. That's what they are. They're for, you know, the drama program, whatever mm -hmm. that may be. You Does know? community services uh, feel that they own the drama program? Um, it's not that we own it. Um, KSCS uh, basically has a funding responsibility because there is $65,000 of Brighter Futures money that is attached to it. Okay. In addition to that, KSCS covers the cost of the salary for the artistic director. So we're okay. upwards of a good amount of money. So when it comes to the accountability for the drama program, we are responsible to ensure that the money and the financing and programming is accountable. Mm -hmm. The other piece to the Brighter Futures program is attached to that is the funding is health dollars. So we, we heard community were upset that, you know, that uh, drama falls under mental health. But the problem is, is that when we look at the community health plan, mental health is one of the areas, as is addictions, as is some of the other areas. Mm -hmm. When they did the logic models, they placed the drama under that one. So we're responsible to ensure that drama fulfills that part of it so that they're promoting and doing aspects of mental health and that we can prove that the program is doing that. So part mm -hmm. of the evaluation was to determine how much of the percentage of the time of the productions, uh, the work they do in planning, all of that also reflects health. That is our responsibility because Correct. we get the funding, we're responsible to be audited by mm -hmm. for Health Canada. Right. So yeah. the ownership is not necessarily uh, a direct, it's our program, but we are responsible, so we have a responsibility. And that was one of the reasons why we're trying to clarify, because yeah, we're strict, we have to do that, but that's funding requirements. Anytime you get funding, that's what you're responsible to do. Right, and so at this point, I mean, it seems, you know, very, um, I guess like a sticky situation. Yeah. It's oh, it not is. definitely a difficult uh, time and for people to try and understand what's going on and sifting through all the information. Where do you go from here and is there a possibility for the drama club to just say, well, we're no longer going to run the program through community services? Um, would that be respected? Well, well, I, well, I think the biggest answer to that would be that tomorrow morning's meeting will probably dictate how the course of action. I, I don't know what their response is going to be. Right. I don't know what kind of plan they're coming back with. I can assure you that that is a possibility, but I'm also going to state that regardless of who is doing it, somebody is responsible to be accountable for the dollars and to ensure that health is promoted within the activity because mm -hmm. we do have other Brighter Futures projects that are required to do as such. Mm -hmm. So to me, the course of action will come from, from that. That is an option. I think we're open to the options. We want to help. That's, that's never been the issue. The closure wasn't for anything outside of trying to improve and make and help support the program. I mean, we've invested close over two million dollars into this project over the last 20 years uh, over the last 20 years so there's no mm -hmm. way that we're looking to just cut it off and say no we don't want to do that we want to see it prosper mm -hmm. we have staff and employees that have volunteered through the years who've made those donations who've done what they can mm -hmm. so we see it as a viable tool to address a lot of the health issues. That's not the question, but we need to prove. And, and if we're gonna seek funding and other support, you need to have a rationale. You need to do the paperwork. You need to do that. There's not- But how did it go so long? Like, 20, I, I can't you know? tell you that. And that's what's difficult is mm -hmm. because I can tell you when the program was brought in here because it came under my program initially the first year under, uh, under addictions. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that part. I can also tell you a lot of the 
the productions because I have nieces and nephews. Um, I haven't been in the organization. I've only been back seven months. All I know is in sifting through the paper, it, it's just like everything else. You get into a planning cycle, you get into things, it's right. one, two, nine. You, you don't do those kinds of things. And we're not questioning what happened the 20 years, but we just want to know what's the plan now. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll share something else. We're also well aware that the um, Cattery Hall, we were advised uh, by the church committee that once Cattery became a saint, the usage of the building could be in less than two years we have to move. What are the plans? We have no plans. We need to look ahead. Are we still looking to build a theater? Are we still looking to do? Mm -hmm. We don't know. Okay. And that we hoped through the evaluation would surface so that we can start planning and help. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't wait two years and then, well, we need a building. Mm -hmm. We're well aware it's a temporary. We lease it. That's, that's all we're doing. We don't own that building. Okay. It's the church who owns that. So. Right, and I mean, I, I definitely see the accountability that yeah. community services yeah. needs yeah. needs to have, of, and of course, you're answerable to the community. Yeah, of also. course, of course. Um, you know, and on, there is a lot of talk about uh, Kevin Saylor, you know, and about his devotion and passion over the years yes. for the theater. I mean, I I had him as a teacher in high school, yeah. and uh, and and honestly, one of the reasons why I got into journalism and acting was part of his, you know, his direction. Yes. I think a lot of people feel that way that are in these streams of yes. entertainment. Um, and I guess what I'm getting at is, does community services see the value of what he's done over the last 20 years in terms of all of the the overtime and, and the dedication that you certainly can't put a price on? Um, yes, we do. We recognize that. We, we also okay. have other mm -hmm. employees who have that same commitment to other area so mm -hmm. that that's not a question that's never been the question the question is is that we need to have planning we need to have accountability we need to be able to justify and support because if we're putting all this support to it dollars mm -hmm. volunteer time all of that we need to be able to say we know where we're going we know where that is all we're trying to do is try and put some kind of thing in place so that we can continue to support it right you know because it's one aspect of quite a few other programs and activities that we have going on here, you know? Well, of, of course, certainly, and um, you know, there's a lot of accusations in the community saying that, you know, community services could have handled it differently, and, what and do you, you know, how I do guess, you feel about that? I, I guess basically, if you look back in the 20 years, attempts have been made in different types of intervention. So looking at the files, looking at that, we figured if those attempts are not going to work, why keep hammering out let's take a pause let's look at things let's get this settled once and for all and start new mm -hmm. you know and how do we play a part in that what part do we play or do they not want us to play a part I don't know mm -hmm. that's what we need to hear so you're gonna figure out after the meeting with the whichever way where do you go from where do here? we go from here and like I said we're optimistic we support the program we want to see it go uh, Kevin's no longer here how what role is that gonna play we don't know Mm -hmm. You know, I, and, and I guess those will be answered by tomorrow's meeting, and we're, we're hoping, you know, that w we can start a new thing. You know, it, mm -hmm. this little bit of a delay has put us uh, a bit behind in, in terms of, of uh, conducting uh, the evaluation. Mm -hmm. What do you think are some of the biggest um, misconceptions that have been circulating in the community that perhaps you would like the opportunity to address? Well, I think one of the biggest things is that we closed the Turtle Island Theater down. We didn't. We closed the KSES drama project mm -hmm. on a temporary suspending it just to allow us time to evaluate uh, why we picked 120 days. Is right, because yeah. Because normally um, when you do an evaluation of a project, it's a four-month period uh, in order to do it. We even thought that uh, it, with the help of the uh, committee and our artistic director that we probably could have accomplished it in less because some of the things we could have just put in place to start and things could have been followed up you know, with, mm -hmm. with the plan. So that was the idea of the line because that's a normal p uh, when you're doing an evaluation program or project of, of that level. 
Okay. okay. Anything else you feel is important to add? Um, not at this point. I just uh, would appreciate, you know, our organization would appreciate that people would ask facts, you know, and ask questions and come and talk to us. And I mean, Derek has received uh, plenty of emails, which he has responded to, and, mm -hmm. and asked the facts instead of, you know, assuming a lot of the things because it's creating a divide within the community when I think believe that we're all on the same side that we want to see the performing arts um, prosper and the fact that we want to see the drama program on project still continue to go that's not the question you know but people keep adding their own take on stuff and 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 it's not solving anything mm -hmm. you know um, and I'm hoping that we could move forward on this and come to a, a good resolution and have the drama program another 20 years. Right, which that's would the, only that's benefit our, the community. And that's our right? goal because it yeah. does benefit the community, it benefits the children, the, the teens, and people who enjoy that. Right, you of know? course. Um, so community services definitely is open to um, trying to figure out where to go from here, exactly. even if the other side comes back with maybe things that you know, maybe there needs to be a meeting of the, the minds in the middle. You guys are and we're hoping, that. and let, that's what we're hoping tomorrow will produce. That's exactly what we want from it, you okay. know. Well, thank you for coming on and sharing You're welcome. Uh, the information and keep us posted. We shall. <laughs> As the story has continued to uh, develop, Mohawk TV has been told that there is a meeting this week between Ganawage Sago de Genha's Community Services and members of the Turtle Island Theatre Company or the Turtle Island uh, Theatre Fundraising Committee. Um, apparently, they're uh, trying to work out this issue. Mohawk TV is going to continue to follow this story. We have also uh, asked for comment from uh, the Turtle Island Theatre Company to uh, set the record straight on their part. Hopefully by next week we will have them on camera and members of their cast and crew. Of course, there has been an outpouring of support here in Gahnawage for the Turtle Island Theatre Company. and. Um, as things uh, continue to develop, like I said earlier, we will continue to inform you, Gahnawage, of how things are unfolding with this story. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'm Regan Jacobs here uh, reporting from our town. This program has been brought to you by Get and Go, a proud sponsor of Mohawk TV programming. Come to Get and Go Gas, located just west of the 207 on Highway 138. While you're fueling up, our convenience store shelves are stocked with your favorite American snacks like Hawaiian Punch, Skinny Cow Ice Cream, Dunkin' Donuts Coffee, Bush's Chili and Grill and Beans, Goober's Peanut Butter and Jam Combo, Vermont Cabot Cheese, Half Gallon of Half and Half Cream, and Lactose-Free Whole Milk. You'll find a surprising variety of sugar-free products including candies, cookies, frosting and cake mix. We also have a wide range of specialty products including iPhone cases and the very hard to find Excedrin Migraine. Get and Go Gas is also the place to find Lori's beautiful scented handmade soaps. And if you don't see what you're looking for, ask us and we'll find it for you. Offering an ethanol mix for your flex fuel car for a cleaner burning engine. Get and Go Gas, open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. on weekdays and until midnight on weekends. Canada's Economic Action Plan is working for Canadians. Helping Northerners get better jobs with education and training programs. Investing in Northern infrastructure to build stronger communities. Canada's Economic Action Plan is creating jobs, growth and prosperity. Find out what's in it for you at actionplan.gc.ca. A message from the Government of Canada. Cruise Ganawage style with Canon's Auto Sales. They have the ride you need to get you where you want to go. Looking for a used vehicle? Think Canon's Auto Sales. He has a variety of quality cars to choose from. 
Looking for a new car? Think Canon's Auto Sales, because new cars are available on request. With cars ranging from $1,000 to $50,000, you'll be sure to find a quality car fast. Bank financing as well as second chance and in-house financing is available. Canon's Auto Sales, conveniently located in the heart of Ganawage on the old Malone Highway. So if you're thinking of getting a new ride, call Canon's today at 450-635-8664 or 514-894-1120. Planning to do a little work around the yard this year? Brique Pave Baudry is your one-stop shop for patio blocks, borders, unistone, masonry, and many other landscaping accessories. As a certified Teco Block dealer, Brique Pave Baudry has unbeatable prices, a large inventory, quick and friendly service, and will deliver to Ganawage with band cards accepted. Brique Pave Baudry provides quality materials and service that will help beautify your yard. Located at 191 Boulevard Maple Grove, 450-225-3653. At Pharmacy Fatty Shamoon and Spiros Marinas, our professional staff is always ready to help Ganawaga Ronu fill their prescription needs. Conveniently located inside the Cattery Memorial Hospital, give us a call at 450-638-5760 and we'll take care of the rest. Our pharmacy is open Monday to Thursday, 9 to 8, on Friday, 9 to 5.30, on Saturday, 9.30 to 1.30, and closed on Sunday. While our other location, Unipri, is located at 9316 Airly in LaSalle, and is perfect for a fast pickup on your way back home from the city. So come pay us a visit at Pharmacy Fatty Shamoon and Spiros Marinas, where we have all your health needs covered. If you're interested in buying airtime in Mohawk TV for your independent programming, please call us today at 450-632-6397 or email us at mohawktv at hotmail.com for our rates. Study Strong Fitness classes will begin on Wednesday, September 4th for eight weeks at a cost of $110. The lunchtime classes are every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Babysitting is also available and included in the price. For more information, contact the Ganawage Youth Center, 450-632-6601. Mohawk TV's Community Bulletin Board. If you'd like to post your public service announcement or listing, call us at 450-632-6397 or email us at bulletinboard at mohawktv.ca. Watch as we look into life in Ganawage, the people and places of our community. Watch as we explore our town. Often, people with disabilities lead sheltered lives, and their interactions are limited to caregivers and family members. I hope this show will bring you awareness of these people, their families, their lives, and their dreams for the future. Watch Walk in My World on Mohawk TV. If you're interested in buying airtime in Mohawk TV for your independent programming, please call us today at 450-632-6397 or email us at mohawktv at hotmail.com for our rates. You're watching Mohawk TV on local channel 4, Gahnawage's first community station.